Hey everyone, I have a breeding group of keyhole cichlids. I've had these fish for like a year and a half and they're like permanent final tank is ready to go. They're currently in a 40 gallon breeder, although I've had them in my 75 with angelfish and some other stuff. Um, but I've set up a new 40 gallon tank for them. Fully planted, really nice substrate, lights, the whole thing for breeding these fish as well as showcasing them because they're just, they're really beautiful, super fun, personable fish and I'll show you guys and talk more about them. This was the tank the keyholes were in before I moved them. This is a, another 40 gallon breeder. Um, this tank was really just a product of the move and having to just quickly set up tanks to put fish in. Um, it's really ugly. Uh, the shot's really bad. The tank is on the floor because the stand. Um, there's issues with the stands. I'll talk. That'll be that'll be a whole other video. So in with the keyholes are these red eye tetras, uh, which will be moving with the fish. They'll be a dither. Um, they just seem to work so much better with the keyholes. Um, there's also red uh, red panda barbs. Uh, you can see one on the right. Uh, they won't be moving. I might move them eventually. Um, they look really good with the keyholes. The The problem is they inhabit a similar area of the tank as the keyholes, so there can be a little bit of aggression. Uh, other than that, there's just a pleco, uh, a banjo, catfish um, in this tank. So this is, again, temporary setup. It, it, it's, it's really, really ugly, and it needs to be reset up. Um, and you can see... Uh, the difference between the way the fish interact, especially when I move them to the, the new tank. This is the tank before I add the fish. And I want to show you this because I, I just want to kind of go through the process of creating this tank and talk about the hardscape and what it is I'm doing here. So these two big stones, your kind of your main focal anchor stones, act as territories or boundary walls to either end of the tank. You can kind of see it on the right, but you can see these stones, these smooth river stones, and that is for the fish to lay their eggs on. When I've had them spawn before, they've spawned on flat, smooth surfaces. So these, hopefully these boundary rocks are going to be rough enough they won't lay eggs on, and having these really nice, perfectly placed stones will <laughs> hopefully create that ideal spot for them to spawn. Um, and because it's on both sides of the tank, I can hopefully get a couple pairs at a time. Interspersed with this, as many plants as I can get. And um, that was really, really important because they look so good against plants. And I, I just wanted that thick jungle because they really love interacting with them. Now I'm going to add the fish. This was a really exciting moment. The culmination of so much work and planning. Um, and having this whole tank just for them was just really exciting. And this, I thought would be really cool, is pouring all the fish in a bucket and having that kind of, you know, the effect of all those fish at once, but the fish kind of just flop in um, a little bit, so not as graceful as I was hoping. I did just do a water change, so I did acclimate them just a little bit. The water chemistry is basically the same. Um, Temperature-wise, I did a little bit of acclimation just to make sure, because I did water change it. Um, but they settle in really fast, getting to see their colors as they contrast against the black sand. Oh, it was just such a cool moment, and I just wanted to share that with you guys. This is the tank a week after I added the fish. So they've now had time to settle in, and they've settled in so, so well. They look incredible. You can see their colors now on display, you know, full effect here. Um, the light, is, the spread's not great on the light because it's not on its rack. I, I gotta, once I put the tank back up, I'll mount the light, it'll look much better. But even here you can see just how these fish contrast against the green plants, against the dark substrate. Like I think it, the black and white substrate and the black and white rocks really contrast the earthy, you know, kind of more reds and yellows of the fish in a really cool way. Um, plants have still been doing fine. The fish are settling in. They've kind of, because they interact so much, they've knocked a few out. And it seems like they may have been picking at some. Um, which is a little different, but the plants are still growing and doing fine. 
The setup of this tank is a little bit different than what I have normally done um, in that I've done a very, relatively speaking, complex substrate um, with very little other additions going into the tank. There's no CO2. The light isn't really that bright and the plants seem to be doing fine. I might add more light just to bring out better colors. Um, but so far it seems to be balancing okay and it's going to be it's going to take time so things like the gh have gone a bit up since i've added this you can see it in the back i added this um this oyster shell and oyster cell oh, oish, oyster shell and uh <laughs> and crushed coral which has, seems to have raised the GH a bunch, but hasn't buffered the KH as much as I was hoping. But we'll see. I might have to tinker with that. Uh, but the substrate itself is a like a kind of a layered substrate. So at the very bottom, I added aragonite um, to do calcium, magnesium, that kind of stuff, as well as ironite to give iron directly to the plants. And this is uh, made for like potted plants or gardening. Um, and I had it on hand, so I, I used it. And I've, I've seen people use it with dirted tanks and things like that, so I felt pretty comfortable with it. Uh, on top of that, I added ADA Amazonia. Um, this is version two, uh, just to do the bulk of the nutrient, supply the bulk of the nutrient needs to the plants. And you don't necessarily have to use aqua soil. Again, these fish benefit so much from the thick plants that I wanted to grow as many as I could um, without the use of CO2 and a whole bunch of fertilizers. That way, just it stays very, very stable because I don't want this to be something where I have to be very, very hands-on all the time. Uh, to cap the aqua soil, which you don't have to do, and there's a whole bunch of people who say one way or the other, um, I use black sand and there are spots where the cichlids have kind of dug out the sand just a little bit and unearthed some ADA, some of the, some of the aqua soil, but that's nothing a little bit of more sand can't fix. Um, but so far I think it looks really good. I, I like the look of the sand. Um, I mean the aqua soil I think would have looked fine too, but these fish have a tendency to dig just a little bit. So I wanted to have the sand. Uh, the plants seem to be fine. I don't think they are bothered by it at all. So I, I'll probably just keep doing it since it seems to be working. To wrap the video up, I want to end it all with the, the history of these fish and why I got them in the first place. This isn't a fish I see a lot of people keep, and when I originally got into these fish, it was about a year and a half ago, probably a little bit more now, um, at my local pet store, and they had one really big keyhole cichlid. This fish was just, you know, big, full-grown fish, or at least it seemed like it at the time, and he was, he was awesome. He was a super cool fish, and they just had one. And I was setting it my 75, and it was like, okay, sure, well, I'll commit to this dwarf cichlid, because I had the idea of doing angelfish and dwarf cichlids kind of together. I thought that'd just be a really cool tank, and it, it was pretty cool. Um, so we got that fish. We asked the store to order more. So they only had the one, and it was like, well, these guys like to be in groups. We'll get six more. Um we added six more of these fish, and the big one it didn't care about these other ones at all. The ones they got in were a lot smaller, and that's these fish right here. This is all six. I haven't lost a single one of these, of these small ones. And they would follow the big fish around. He wouldn't care. He, he, he was a very outgoing fish. He dug with his mouth all the time. And you'll see in the clip some of the, these fish doing it, but he did it constantly. And uh, it was tragic what happened. So what happened, he jumped out of the tank. These fish are notorious jumpers. Put a lid on your tank. I'll do a care video somewhere down the line. Um, but put a lid on because he jumped out of a thin little gap where my canister filter hose went into the tank because that filter was on the side of the tank. So the lid was kind of propped up on it. He jumped out and got stuck in a couch cushion. Um, oh, man. And this was sitting right next to the tank. So he went down straight into the cushion. My 
girlfriend was sitting on the couch and she could feel like a vibration thought it was her phone she was like she was looking for the fish eventually she realized where did the fish go i come home after work and i'm like she's like the fish is gone i don't know what's happening and we i'm like oh no i i eventually we like pull open the couch cushion and there's the fish not dead this fish survived which was incredible <laughs> this it made a full recovery but as a result we kind of went into a bit of a panic mode as you know people tend to do and we sealed off the tank as much as we could like completely we took i think we took like fish bags because i don't think we had anything else around we had like small fish bags we just kind of stuffed them in around the holes no way a fish can jump and i don't know what happened I'm guessing it was an oxygen thing. I think we may have sealed the tank so, so well, the tank was deprived of oxygen and it killed most of the fish, including the big keyhole cichlid. And oh, this was devastating. I After everything, it was just, it was horrible. All of the smaller fish survived. So these small keyholes, they were all in the tank at the time. They survived did just fine um but it, it was tragic it was horrible um we had some really nice fish big angel we had a nice pleco you know all of that it was just gone and um but that that is that's that's the story the, these fish we've just been growing them up they, they spawned in the 75 um it had so many other fish we ended up adding that it you know they didn't survive but um but all of these, all those six that we originally got from the store, those really small fish, we've just grown them up, and here they are now in their new tank. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you've watched to the end, please consider liking, subscribing, you know, all that kind of stuff I have to say. Um, I really, this is a fun video to make. This is a fun tank to set up, and honestly, I'm glad I'm able to share this with you guys. So, leave a comment. Check out my other videos, and I'll see you guys next time.